Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Casey Brown. I'm a real estate agent here in Southern Utah with Realty One Group Goldmark. Today I wanted to talk to you about our heat here in the desert. It's something you might want to consider before you move here or vacation here. The number one thing you need to be aware of is hot cars. Every year we have children who die in hot cars and pets. So make sure that if you have to run into a store, grocery store, gas station, anything, you do not ever leave an animal or a person or baby strapped in a car seat in your car, not even for five minutes. You'd be amazed at how fast it happens and the heat becomes so intense so quickly inside a vehicle that it can actually cause death. Every year we have children who die in hot cars here and I hate to see it because it's so easily preventable and sometimes it's an accident even from a local that you know they accidentally for whatever reason forgot their kid in the car um, and sometimes it's out of towners who just don't they underestimate our desert heat and they don't realize how quickly the temperatures climb in a car so you never ever even with the windows down leave a child or a pet in a hot car in the summer even if the air conditioner was running clear up until the time that you pulled into the store and turned your car off it doesn't matter that car will heat up quickly also, you're going to want to make sure that you don't ever set a child on the hood of a car to change their diaper or anything else. Put your hand on the top of your car and feel how hot it is. It will burn your skin and take your skin right off. I actually witnessed this in the Walmart parking lot one time and the dad laid down a baby with no shirt on to change its diaper and the baby was burned badly and it was a terrible thing for me to see and people just don't realize how hot it is here. The other thing to consider, especially if you're visiting our national parks or going hiking, is to be prepared for the heat. Always have a lot of extra water in your vehicle. Always carry water with you everywhere you go, and not your normal amount of water, but extra water, a lot of water. You're gonna need to stay hydrated. It's a good idea to wear loose clothing, light colored clothing, and really prepare yourself for the high temperatures. You're gonna wanna get in the shade as often as you can, cool your body off when you can. Um, as long as you are safe then, and you know, practice good common sense when you're out in the heat, you'll be fine. But it's something that you need to be aware of. And if you have ch children and you're taking them to Zion Park or on a hike or whatever, there are signs for heat stroke, heat exhaustion um, that you need to watch for with your kids. And some of those signs include like they get a bright red face, um, they're extremely hot, high body temperature, but they're not sweating. Uh, things like that are going to show you that they are having like heat stroke or heat exhaustion. Uh, that can come with headaches, nausea, dizziness, confusion. Um, it just gets worse and worse and compounds. We went out tubing on the river one year and it was the Virgin River. We decided to tube and since the tubing in Springdale just never was long enough, we decided to jump in at the um, Laverica Bridge and go clear down to Grandpa's Pond. And what we didn't realize, and we map quested it, we're from here, we thought we had this covered, you know, no big deal, but what we didn't realize um, is that when we map quested like how many miles it was, uh, it didn't take into account the winding and the twist and turns of the river. So what we thought would only take us a couple hours ended up taking us from morning until after dark. We were on that river for hours. And of course, no matter how hard you try, all your food and everything ends up in the river when you're tubing. And so we had run out of like food and drinks and everything early on and had all day to get through with the kids. And when you're down in that river, you don't have cell service. Like there's not a road going out where you can just jump out and say, okay, we're just gonna stop here. When you get down into that river, you're stuck there. So, um, Needless to say, my husband got heat stroke really bad. He was throwing up, I think. He was very sick that whole night. The next day, it took him a few days to recover from it. The kids were very um, lethargic and sluggish. We were having to carry them and drag them. Um, and we were all like sick and exhausted and ornery and dehydrated and sunburned. So even when you live here, it's easy to underestimate the heat. I mean, there were times on that river trip where we were worried that we were going to have to call for help or something, you know, which is hard to do because, like I said, in a lot of places, there's no service when you're down in that river because of the high canyon walls. So be very mindful and know that prepare for the worst. It's 
not uncommon to get yourself into a situation that you thought you'd only be gone for a couple hours and it turns into a lot longer. So be very well prepared when you go out in this heat. I am going to put at the end of this video a couple of pictures that show you the warnings of heat stroke and heat exhaustion and what you can do about it if it happens. And um, I'll put it on for like a longer duration of time so that you have time to take a screenshot of it. But you can also get on Google and Google things like signs of heat stroke, signs of heat exhaustion and get all the answers that you need. Do your research before you go out so that you know what to watch for with your kids and what to do if it happens to you because it is very hot here and it happens to everybody at some point. The last thing that I want to talk about today is your animals. So if you have dogs that you like to walk every day, make sure that you walk them in the early morning or the late afternoon. And I mean late afternoon, like at night, after the sun goes down and the asphalt has had time to cool off. I have actually seen the paws on dogs' feet burn completely off, where they get burned so severely that the pad comes off. So imagine it this way, if you can't walk around with bare feet because the ground is too hot, your dog probably shouldn't be on it either. So be very careful with that. The dogs will also die in hot cars. Now some stores around here will allow you, actually quite a few will allow you to bring them in if they're like small or well behaved or you can hold them or whatever um, because we don't want them to die in parking lots. So ask, check with where you're going. Is it okay if I bring a dog? And you know, if, if you're not gonna be able to take them with you everywhere, you might want to leave them home where they're safe. I'm not telling you not to walk your dogs. I'm not telling you not to enjoy your dogs and not to take them out into nature. I know that it can be a really hot day and my dogs will be out laying on the concrete, just soaking up that sun and it's hard to believe they can even do it because it's so hot and they have the option of either being in the house or the shade because we have a dog door um, and they choose that. So <laughs> I'm not definitely not saying don't take your dogs anywhere, but call ahead and make sure that where you're taking them dogs are allowed so that you don't find yourself in a situation where you go to some trailhead or something and you're planning on taking your dog and then you get there and find out that they don't allow dogs on the trail and then you're going well I don't want to drive all the way back do I leave the dog in the car no you will come back to a dead dog so make sure that you protect yourself your children your family and your pets and look out for strangers too if you see a stranger that might be forgetting a kid in a car or something, don't be afraid to say something because you might be saving a life. It's unreal to me the high occurrence of deaths that we have here in the summertime because of stuff like that. And it's just one of those things that's underestimated. But if you come here and you want to go to the lake and the river and do all of the fun things and go to the pool, like it's beautiful here and it's a great place to visit and a great place to enjoy. You just have to be smart about the heat. Thanks everybody and have a great day.